Alrighty, well, I'm um, doing my chores out here. This pot was full. You can see now it, as it melts, the water level is going down. But as I said before many times, snow is mostly air, really. There isn't as much water in snow as one would think there is. So it's melting down. And I said it would go to about here. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what it's doing, too. It's going to about there. So... And then I'll just, once it all melts down, I'll just keep scooping snow and re-topping it up as all. Anyway, um, yeah, that's a pretty view. I, um, I'm going to talk about something here, maybe then again, not everybody would want to hear about this. Not everybody would necessarily even know about this on here because I'm in Canada. And I don't know how far news travels these days. I know that um, here in Canada we don't get a lot of news anymore. Um, our government has banned us from from um, knowing certain things and so there's a lot of news from other places that we just don't hear about um, anymore. And yeah we're not we don't we don't we don't we don't find things out like we once did about what goes on in the world because we're kind of banned from finding things out um, there's massive censorship here now anyway there's a news network in canada that is totally independent it, it isn't funded by government and so they have the independence to report on things even if the government doesn't want those things reported on and it's called rebel news uh, they rely strictly on their own revenue generating and private donations and things like that. It's owned by a fellow by the name of Ezra Levant. And they have a reporter on there who's, I would say, probably in his late 50s or early 60s. He'd be a little older than myself, but not by much. A little older than me. Not by a lot. And um, he wears a hat. You know, it's kind of funny. I wear a hat too, but... Anyway, he wears a hat, that's kind of his trademark, and um, he's quite good, he's kind of fearless. He'll, he'll, he'll go after these people and ask them hard questions. He very seldom gets answers because they don't want to talk to him. But um, oh, a few days ago, our deputy prime minister, nasty, nasty woman with connections to, um, well, to... Um, N-A-Z-I, I guess you could say, to those types of people, you know. Um, that, um, her, her people come from Ukraine, and she's uh, connected with, with factions of that that still, that still exist within the Ukraine. Um, a woman by the name of Christia Freeland, nasty, nasty woman, uh, she was going into some uh, public space there to uh, some sort of, well, it was a, had to do with a, it was a memorial for um, people who were killed in a, in a terrorist attack on an airplane. Anyway, an airplane was blown up and a lot of Persian people, or Persian Canadian, had died on it. And she was there anyway for this memorial. Well, David Menzies, the reporter, tried to ask her some questions as she walked in which is called scrumming. It's what reporters do when politicians are walking the sidewalk or whatever. It's not uncommon for reporters to approach them and uh, say, you know, you know, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Freeland, uh, whatever, you know, whoever or whoever it is. Say, uh, you know, what about this or what about that or what's your position on this or that or why this or why that or whatever. And that, that's just part of the job of being a reporter. And part of the job of being a politician is that you're going to encounter that, you know, at least in a free and democratic society, that is. Now, obviously, she doesn't have to answer his questions. You know, she's a free citizen. She doesn't have to answer his questions. It won't necessarily look good on her if she doesn't, but still, she don't have to. Um, she doesn't want to answer his questions. All she's got to do is say no comment, you know. He's probably still going to pursue her until she gets into the building, but... He's not going to harm her or anything. He wasn't there to, to, to attack her or anything like that. He just wanted to ask her some questions, and I suppose they were questions that she didn't want to answer. Anyway, her RCMP protection that they 
have this on video, it's been recorded, so this isn't something that I'm just saying because I think this is what happened, or because they say that's what happened, and I believe them. I, I've actually seen the video. Um, <coughs> the RCMP, one of the RCMP officers on the protection detail basically walked in to David Menzies and then placed him under arrest for assaulting a police officer, said that he had walked into him, then they were trying to say, oh, you were going to knock people over, you were trying to knock people down, and all this, and you assaulted a police officer, you not walked into a police officer and assaulted him, and they handcuffed him, and they put him in a police car. Well, I guess they just took him in behind a, a school that had been let out for the day, so there was nobody around, and they released him. So he wasn't charged in the end, now there's a lawsuit over it. But here's the thing, in a free society, things like that don't happen. Uh, David Menzies has been attacked twice by the Prime Minister's security detail. Twice he's been roughed up by them for asking questions, which is his job. Now, the other thing is, during the, um, you know what, the whole sea and amdemic thing there, you know, <laughs> during the cough, cough, wheeze, wheeze thing, um, uh, the province of Quebec actually had a curfew. They weren't allowing, if you were a citizen in Quebec, you couldn't go outside after a certain hour of the day. They had like a dusk to dawn curfew or whatever. And that was in force, you know, they were arresting people for being outside. The police were and stuff, making fines against people and stuff. Well, the media had an exemption from that. And I've seen a video, now bear in mind, um, Ezra Levant, who owns Rebel News, is, is a Jewish man. And uh, I've seen video there of one of their reporters in Montreal, Quebec, being confronted by the police and saying, well, look, I'm, I'm media. I'm allowed to be out here. I'm media. I'm reporting on the curfew. And um, the cop says, oh, he says... The, Oh, yeah, and then he told him, he said, what media? And he says, Rebel News. And the cop says, ah, oh, yeah, he said, that Jew media. He actually said that, that Jew media. You know, uh, well, I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions. I know what conclusion I've drawn from that. And then when you combine that with the Deputy Prime Minister's connection to certain people, and when you combine that with everything else that's happening here with the euthanasia program we have here now where they're expanding it to more and more people they're going to soon start taking out the mentally ill a friend of mine who is in his 70s has a brother who took quite sick and ended up in the hospital and he had three doctors browbeating him to avail himself of the maid MAID program medical assistance in dying the man was having a gallbladder attack and they wanted to put him down. And they, they made his life a living hell in that hospital because he was refusing to agree to let them kill him. Uh, this is just one story. The man's traumatized now. That man never believed that the authorities ever did anything bad before. And now he's terrified of hospitals, just like I am. I'm terrified of hospitals, too, because of my experiences in those places. Um, this is a man who lived his whole life believing in the system. And now he's, he's devastated, you know, and he's frightened. And he's traumatized. Um, and he don't believe in the system anymore, at least not like he once did. Anyway... Um, as more people have these experiences, we're going to see more and more of this. Um, yeah. I don't like where it's going. That's all. I just don't like where it's going. Um, I'm seeing too many things that remind me of history. And uh, not good history. Bad history. We don't want to go down that road again. We've already done that. We should have learned. We should have learned. We should know better by now. Anyway, that's it. Um, it'll be what it'll be, I guess. If you believe in God, pray to Him. That's all. If you believe in God, pray to Him, because He's the only one who can help us. It's bad. It's real bad.
but I guess it's part of the, it has to happen. The Bible says it has to happen before Jesus returns, so that's it. Anyway, video size limit reached. Talk to you later.